Guys, I'm a little torn. There's this guy on LinkedIn who's bragging about his three employees that brought their beds to the office to sleep so that they could cover the PGA tour. Now, this dude, Sir Ian Taylor, he seems, he seems like a nice guy. He's talking about, well, if they didn't do that, our contract might have been canceled and then the, the employees might have lost their jobs or blah, blah, blah. But like, it just sets a bad precedent, I think, because when we look at the comments a little bit later in this video, you can see all of the other CEOs in here chiming in going, Dang, I wish my employees did that. I wish my employees were that dedicated. And they're just getting ideas. Yeah, it's cool that you got dedicated employees. You shouldn't have to bring your bed to work or worry about losing your job. But, and you're wondering, like, why can't they just do this? at home, right? Well, it's because apparently they have uh, half a million dollars worth of equipment that they can't take home in order to keep delivering their results or whatever, but I don't know. This is because of some lockdown in New Zealand. Three members of our remote golf operation team had turned our offices into their flat, their bubble, so they could continue to deliver our virtual eye golf graphics remotely to our overseas clients so our lockdown in New Zealand did not impact their global coverage this weekend. How easy would it have been for them to just take the days off at home, but it never even occurred to them. I'm gonna I'm stop you right there. It 100% did occur to them. Uh, they just didn't tell you. So if you watch the golf this weekend, you will know it's coming from three guys who have shifted their mattresses into our office so they could meet the lockdown requirements, which we all agree was the right thing to do. I've, I don't know if he's talking about the lockdown requirements or the people moving into the office. Without impacting the service, we deliver our clients and safeguarding those contracts that will keep all their workmates in their job. Um, this sets a bad look for everyone else who didn't immediately raise their hand and move into the office for three days. Everyone else just looks bad, but just by default. For those who have expressed concern about the mental well-being of the three guys who voluntarily moved into isolation in our offices to cover the golf this weekend, the pictures below might help you reassure that they're all pretty well set up. This just looks like any other regular startup office with a kitchen and a TV. They volunteered so that others with families wouldn't have to be separated from them. Is that, is that what they told you? They're also golf fanatics, and this weekend they will be working live on the Czech Open and the Northern Trust Tournament in New York, and the Women's Open at wherever that is. When they are not working, they have set up a putting green, a VR gaming console, and they have a rooftop area. The building is centrally heated. They have said it is way warmer than their flats. Okay, that's, that's cool. There aren't a lot of comments on this thread that are like, questioning him. Most of them are just founders and CEOs that are like, wow, great work. But then we have Sam Mills here, the only person that says something that's like, yeah, this isn't something to brag about. He goes, your employees are spending lockdown, sleeping on camp beds in their workplace away from their family and non-loved ones in order to deliver a product that with respect is non-essential, right? It's just golf, right? I don't want to be that like guy, but the world will go on without the PGA Tour. Like, it's just golf, good God. We're in a national and global emergency, and whilst I understand it might be your employee's choice to do this, props to them if so, posting this on LinkedIn and celebrating the work ethic as something to strive for seems unhealthy. Yes, I just would delete this post. He goes on to talk about how we've seen workplace burnout, huge increases in mental health issues. Rob here speaking some sense. I couldn't agree more with you. Is that what we've really come to? The pursuit of profit outmatches everything. I'm surprised though that a digital giant such as Animation Research hasn't got the facilities to be able to let these people do it at home. Like I thought working in a digital environment, you could do it from anywhere. Isn't that why uh, it's based in New Zealand rather than Silicon Valley, right? Um, Claire here, Sam, I completely agree. Family first lockdowns are very destructive to both work and family life. This approach should not be rewarded as it places the job above the needs of the individual. And so then we scroll down a little more and there's head of sports, Ben Taylor here going, uh, hey, Sam, thanks for raising this point as it is an important one. I'm one of the operators who's been working on the sports broadcast team for the past 10 years. And, and this, is, this is the hilarious part. And I would have definitely been at the office if the three boys hadn't put their hands up but you're not at the office because you didn't put your hand up. Is that, why didn't you raise your hand then, right? It makes you look bad. It's important to understand from our point of view that taking part of an international broadcast is amazing fun. Unfortunately, the infrastructure isn't quite there yet to allow us to do that from home. Boys, you've had 18 months to get this 
figured out. The boys made the call that while the work may be non-essential in New Zealand, we are now a very essential part of the broadcast for the PGA, European Tour, and LPGA, and with productions on site ramping back up despite soaring COVID numbers overseas, our absence would have a huge impact on the production and also on our chances to continue winning these international contracts and employing such amazing staff here in New Zealand. That's their cop-out, so to speak, right? I don't want people to lose their jobs, but I don't think that you should have to grab your mattress and move in to an office in order to keep your job. Like if that's the reward for sleeping at the office is keeping my job, then okay, bye. It's time, it's time to look for a new company. You guys should have figured out a way to be able to let these people work from home. So here is Sir Ian Taylor's response. This team is Wanao. And so I Googled that. It's a New Zealand thing. It just means a word for extended family. And so as we all know, work is not your family. Your boss is not your dad or your mom. Your coworkers aren't your brothers or sisters. You are a sports team. Last year, we lost all of our contracts in a little over 24 hours. Maybe you should have like negotiated the contract so that if something like this happened, they can't immediately cancel it. I don't, that's not, I'm not a lawyer or anything, but that seems like a good clause to add in a, in a contract such as this. Our CEO, Cheryl, also set the standard by immediately cutting her salary by 50%. Okay, so th this, when, when CEOs cut their salary, it doesn't, <laughs> It's nice. It's it's a nice look, but it doesn't mean that much because if a CEO can cut their salary by 50%, imagine what they were making before. On top of CEOs don't really make all their money from salary, they make their money by business expensing assets, stocks, other things to pull revenue from. Two of the three flatmates and the third has no family in New Zealand. So that makes it okay. So that like gives them a uh, an excuse to be able to just sleep in the office because, oh, you don't have any family and you guys are roommates anyways, so why not just sleep here? It, it shouldn't matter whether they're single or whether they have family in New Zealand. None of that should play an impact on how easy or willing they are to go sleep at an office. It's just They put their hands up so the workmates with families did not have to worry about how we honored the contracts that pay the bills that keep us going. They also did not want to let our clients down because they are part of our larger family as well. They're not in certain jobs. There's definitely kind of like a family vibe, right? Like if you're in the military, brothers and sisters, you're like a firefighter, brothers and sisters, 24 hour shifts. You guys actually sleep together, right? For certain jobs, certain types of of professions. It's a totally different vibe. But like at an animation studio for a golf game, I don't think I don't think it applies. It's not a life or death situation. They're not risking their lives. There's really it doesn't have the same connotation. It doesn't have that same sort of feel. Like it's, it's just golf. He goes on to say, I can promise you we take the needs of the individuals in our team extremely seriously. These three individuals live for this type of challenge. Is that what they told you or are you just saying that? To to sound good. And they also understand that this work is essential when it comes to protecting the jobs of everyone in the team. That's the challenge about deciding what jobs are essential. If a job pays the bills, the mortgage, not to mention the taxes that pay for the doctors, nurses, teachers, police, and other frontline services, then surely that's pretty essential. Like, see, this is, this guy is like playing 40 chess here. He's like, I know it's golf, but our money keeps the essential government services running. And so I'd say, since we're playing a part in that, we're essential too. Like I'm sure some of you guys that watch this channel are big golf fans and that's great. I'm personally not. I just don't, it's just golf, bro. If, the, if PGA Tour doesn't come on this weekend, okay, whoop de do. It's like, who cares? Negotiate your contract better so this sort of thing can't happen. Keeping these contracts serviced is essential for us to keep people employed and not just ours. The fact that this team has found a way to do that safely is something to celebrate. Given the value of these contracts, we would definitely have qualified for the wage subsidy had we not done this. So he's, he's basically saying we would have still gotten money if these three people didn't go in. But his excuse for not doing that is there are businesses that don't have these options. So isn't it better that they take the money while we find ways to take care of our own team without placing more demand on the fund? This guy is pro at playing 4D chess. 4,000 IQ here, right? Like we have this person here away from their family and loved ones for three full days, tragic. Are you gatekeeping? Are you, gate are you saying three full days away from their family isn't something to be upset about? For certain people, I can imagine they're very upset about it. But as the, as the founder here says, they don't have any family in New Zealand anyways, and they're already roommates and you know, they're single. So who cares, right? Like this <laughs> good on them. It's, not, it's really not. It sets a bad look for everyone else that didn't instantly volunteer. No one is forcing them. They take their work seriously with pride and have found meaning in it, and there's nothing unhealthy in that. Natasha, come on. Then we have Cameron Preble here, injecting more facts into this. 
The problem I see is that this kind of post sets a bad precedent for other less reputable managers out there to pressure their employees into doing similar things. I know you want to celebrate your team's hard work, and it's great you're doing your utmost to ensure their well-being, but it is also encouraging a type of toxic culture in the wider tech community, which I don't think we need. And that's what it all really comes down to. I would keep this on the hush-hush, personally. I wouldn't go on LinkedIn and be like, look, look at how dedicated our employees are. Like, they moved in. And to keep the golf tournament running, this, like, just delete this. Like, it'd be something to talk about inside the office, maybe. But this is just giving other people ideas. Here's the CEO of the actual company, the one that cut their salary by 50%. All in a day's work, Ian. Like, making it normalized. And yes, I've said we'll fund new underpants and socks, purchased from supermarket or online shopping, of course, if the lockdown goes more than a week. Is that like a, supposed to be funny or something? Like, ha, 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 they're only there for three days, so they don't need new underwear or new socks. But if it goes on for more than a week, we'll make sure to business expense those. I feel like this isn't funny. It's not even, this is the response from the CEO. Like, talk about giving them a bonus or a raise or more vacation or, or something, but new socks and underwear if it goes on for more than a week. <laughs> they don't even get it now. Here's another CEO. Wow, great team. Another great example of why ARL is a world leader. Here's another CEO. Great attitude. Just take it in your stride and get it done. That's terrible. And then down here, someone say, I'm always asleep at work. Quite ironic for a CEO to say that, huh? Here's another co-founder at some other random company. That's legend. Also, I'll be able to watch the PGA and European Tour action this weekend. Cheers, boys. You guys sleep at work. Well, I sit at home in my comfortable mansion as a co-founder watching the PGA Tour. But don't worry, boys. Sending thoughts and prayers. One like equals one prayer. All you negative nannies out there, have you considered the possibility that if those three dedicated employees decided to stay at home, Animation Research may have had their contract canceled? Am I the only one that keeps thinking about how to negotiate contracts so that if a COVID lockdown happens, they don't, they, like, they can't cancel the contract and they just agree to delay it a few days? Am, am I the only one here that thinks that is a reasonable thing to do. And even if it is canceled, the, the, the founder himself said that they would be eligible for the wage subsidy. Here's another one. The culture that supports each other is palpable, even over a digital platform like LinkedIn. <laughs> ugh, ugh, get that out of here. We'll definitely be watching, so thank you, team. Great effort. <laughs> Sleeping at work so some Jane Wilson can say, I'll be watching. Appreciate you, though. Another managing director. Well done, team. Here's another one. Those guys deserve a beer. And then this guy goes, and unlimited Uber Eats. Boy, if I'm bringing my mattress to the office to sleep for three days, and you say, you can have Uber Eats and a beer. I quit. Like, I quit. Like, bye, I'm going to go get a new job. Like, this is really phenomenal. Sacrifices made on many levels while achieving great success and job satisfaction. Well done, team. Another executive. Here's one from Jeff, looks like the ultimate bachelor pad to me. People who say work looks like an ultimate bachelor pad are usually the people that never want to go home because they hate their home life. Cheers, Ian. Dedicated servants to the cause. That's probably the most accurate statement in here. Dedicated servants. They're not servants. It's just a job. It's, but like this is what the people at the top think of you. You're servants. Peasants. Get back to work. Peons. Dedicated. Good to see. Here's a director at Forbes. Wow, impressive. You built a great culture. I, this is not a culture to brag about when people volunteer to sleep at work. An impressive and committed crew. Business must have a great culture. It's just three people. Oh, it's from a dude that coaches CEOs to reach their full potential. <laughs> Here's someone who has zero idea of the work world. That's the most nice, cozy, and creative work and home sleeping place I've ever seen. The beds are so nicely done. Instead of work from home, you guys have done home at work. Great work ethic shown. Hard to find, hard to keep. Helps that they love the job environment team. Where's the money? Let's talk about the money. Let's talk about the compensation. You don't get to be like, well, at least you get to keep your job. It's an abusive relationship. Here's another one. Obviously, you have a great team. However, you must also provide a great working culture that has inspired them to go the extra mile when required. It's not going an extra mile when required. Going the extra mile is like when you do it on your own initiative. Like, when required, that's just work. I think these moments must be some of the best highlights for a business owner. To know that you have uh, brainwashed your team so well that they're instantly willing to give up their entire weekend and bring their own mattress to work. If the intern here was like, bro, I'm bringing my mattress to sleep at your house because I'm so dedicated to editing your videos or helping you film or whatever, I'd be like, dude, GTFO, <laughs> go live your life. Here's a CTO. That is such a Kiwi thing to do heart emoji. I sure do miss this Kiwi approach to things. It's something special about the country. People do it without expecting anything back. I can see people doing something without expecting anything back at a charity, someplace you're volunteering, but not at a job. 
you do things to get paid. If your job didn't pay you, would you still show up for work? Probably not. You don't do your job without expecting anything back. And companies don't hire you without expecting anything back. Here's someone, we'll definitely think of them as I'm watching the coverage this weekend. Thank you, team. Hope you get home and to a proper bed soon. You're not going to think of them. You can totally forget that they even exist. What an amazing culture. People are the only thing that matters. This is next level commitment. This isn't something to brag about. I don't understand this culture of bragging about working yourself to death because you will never be on your deathbed wishing you spent more time at the office. In fact, whenever I think back of all the times that I had to work overtime or go above and beyond, I don't, I don't remember them fondly. I remember thinking this is like, we should have figured this out beforehand. Like we should have planned better. We should have gotten our deadlines better. We should have been more accurate in estimating what we could deliver within the time frame instead of the salespeople over promising and then under delivering just because they wanted to close a contract. That's amazing they're doing that. Glad you have such nice offices and create a good space for them so it would be bearable. What a great team culture, says another CEO. You know, this kind of reminds me of that meme. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Just once, I wish my employees would say, and then it's just filled with things that no one would ever say. I can't believe how much they pay me. Do you want some back? We decided to work this weekend. See, we decided to work this weekend to get ahead. We love this place. I'm sorry, that problem was all my fault. Given the chance to keep working here, I would gladly accept a cut in pay. I just love your meetings. Why don't you go home early? We have everything under control. I'm coming in early tomorrow. You're right, I was wrong. Of course I don't mind working late. This is what all these CEOs in the comments are thinking. Yeah, I just wish my employees would sleep at work and take care of everything while I sit on my yacht and don't have to worry about a single thing. Isn't this awesome? It's not. It's really not. Take this off LinkedIn. What a team. Love seeing your team's passion for their job. Passion doesn't pay the bills, Natasha. So the business coach is admiring people that sleep at work? Doesn't sound like a business coach I'd want to hire. That's amazing. Speaks volume about the culture you have there. Culture doesn't keep the lights on, fam. That's outstanding. Culture enacted. Another CEO here. Another CEO. He tags a bunch of people. Check this out. What an awesome idea. See, people, CEOs are getting ideas. They're getting ideas. I'd be in, especially when the miss is grumpy at home. What an awesome idea. I'd be glad to sleep at work when my wife is being a bitch. That's what this says. This, this is a perfect example of people living the company's purpose beyond the posters on the wall. People living the company's purpose. That is a disgusting phrase in and of itself. People should live for their own purpose in life. Plain and simple always look out for you don't don't live a company's purpose what the fuck is this another ceo kiwi ingenuity and dedication right there anyways guys i don't know i almost like threw up a little bit when i like this has 4100 likes sleeping pods at work are one thing bringing mattresses to work are an entirely different thing sir ian taylor look dude like i feel like you're a nice guy but the way that this is posted and and if you look at the comments of your own post you'll see that all these other people in here are getting ideas for what's unhealthy at a workplace and that's the end all be all of this post. Like, don't brag about bringing a mattress and sleeping at work. It's, <laughs> you don't live to work. You work to live. I don't know how many times I have to say this. And this is living to work. And you should have figured out how to negotiate these contracts so that this sort of thing wouldn't happen. And you should have figured out how to let these people do this job at home because they're sitting at an office with this equipment doing it there. Why couldn't they take this equipment home? I mean, obviously this thing looks pretty heavy, but I'm sure there are ways you can like log in to these machines remotely this this is the part that gets me right they have two bathrooms with showers all three are single and two of them live together anyways why that doesn't matter just because they're single doesn't mean that they're more likely or more willing or it's more okay for them to sleep at work you're basically saying they don't have responsibilities outside of work so work is their life you better give these people a raise or a bonus or a promotion with a raise not just a job title change here okay give them something besides a linkedin post all these people saying, well, great team, great culture. They're praising this guy who posted the picture, not even the people in the, in the photo, you know? Like, they're like, wow, you've made a great culture. Wow, Ian, this is a great culture because of you. Not, not about, like, the people working there. Golf is all good, but to be essentially trapped at your place of work is a bit grim. He goes, watch out for the story that may be on TV news shortly. You will see that this isn't any old office because that's the other thing we rate as important. Ugh. You have to work in a place you love coming to every day. No, you don't. That's why people work remote. This is not a workplace. It's the place we spend the second most time in after our homes. And in the recently completed renovations, everyone had input. Isn't this sad? Isn't, this is just the most depressing sentence. It's the place we spend the second most time. It's just really sad state of affairs.
And to keep this in perspective, no one had to be asked to do this. It's the mode they move to because we are a team and we care for each other. Staff families are baking for them, doing their washing when they need it, and checking in daily to see that they are okay. Should the lockdown be extended, we are already planning for ways to make their lives even easier. This isn't just the three of them. The entire team is there for them. I thought you said that these people were there so that other people could be with their families. Taylor, Ian, sir. But anyways, guys, I don't know. I thought this was an interesting story. And if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Click the like button. It helps. It helps more than you know, really. Subscribe if you want to see me call out corporate some more. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. Would you bring your mattress to the office to sleep for three days so that your founder could post a LinkedIn story about you? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. So that's all I got. I'll link all this stuff down below so you can see that I, I'm not trying to take it out of context or anything. But uh, yeah, have a good Friday. Enjoy your weekend. I'm out.